Greetings. It is I, the Great One Himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com, on the interwebs. Why am I getting more emails? I don't have time for emails right now. Okay. Yes, it's going to be a busy week. There may be repeats the rest of this week. We'll see how it goes. I got a lot going on. Anyway, the other day I was killing some time while I was standing by to stand by at a theater gig. And I was on the Twitterverse. And I saw a link to an article in the Wall Street Journal, of all places, about Peter Singer. Now, if you don't know who Peter Singer is, Peter Singer is my nemesis from way, way back. Peter Singer is one of the biggest pieces of shit to walk the planet Earth. Peter Singer is a utilitarian. Now, I did an entire giant series of podcasts, like eight episodes or something. It was something like four or five hours. I recently repeated it here on Stating the Obvious. I put all the episodes together and made one long episode out of it. Utilitarianism is the political philosophy which justifies everything. If you don't know what utilitarianism is, here it is in a nutshell. Utilitarianism says that the morally and ethically right thing to do in any given situation is that which has the greatest amount of benefit for the greatest amount of people. It's based on the greatest amount of happiness. If you study utilitarian, you'll hear about the happiness principle and the, all this other stuff. So anyhow, so whenever, th and this justifies everything. I went over this in my series. I don't want to repeat it. But again, it's uh, utilitarianism is all about doing the greatest amount of good. So again, if you have five men and one woman, you have six units of happiness. So if the five men would all be the happiest by raping the woman, then that's five units of happiness in favor of rape. One unit of happiness, let's assume the woman doesn't want to be raped because she's not a feminist, one unit of happiness against being rape. Well, five is greater than one, so under utilitarianism, the correct thing to do would be to rape the woman because that's creating the greatest amount of happiness. Now, utilitarians will say that's not true, and then they come up with rule utilitarianism, all this other shit. It's all bullshit. Again, if you really fucking care, go find the podcast series about utilitarianism. I go through this step by step in depth over and over and over. Utilitarianism justifies anything and everything because it's simply tied to doing the greatest amount of good and creating the greatest amount of happiness, all of which are completely subjective concepts. Peter Singer also wrote the book Animal Liberation, in which he argued that animals have rights, which of course they don't, which doesn't mean animals should be treated inhumanely. I agree with Peter Singer on many things, even though he's a piece of shit such as you know, putting chickens in small cages where they can't even expand their wings. I would agree with him that that is wrong. I'm all in favor of eating animals, but I'm in favor of the animals being allowed to roam around outside and live a natural life before I eat them. Peter Singer, of course, is opposed to eating animals because he sees that as slavery and all this other shit. But, of course, Peter Singer has absolutely no problem with murdering people in Afghanistan with flying robots because the president of the United States has black skin and is a member of the Democrat Party. And that's why I despise Peter Singer. And I honestly didn't know the fucking piece of shit was even still alive. I thought he was dead. I was hoping he was dead. He should be dead. He should be killed by a flying robot for the greater good. Anyhow, I saw this article, Wall Street Journal, went over and read it, and I just want to read a few passages, throw out some commentary, and then i got to get on with my life because i got to go take pictures of cute girls today. It's going to be rough, and I have limited time, so I need to hurry the fuck up. All right, Peter Singer would sooner donate a kidney than sponsor a concert hall. So when entertainment mongol David Geffen gave $100 million in early March for the renovation of the Avery Fisher Hall at Lincoln Center in New York, it will soon be renamed David Geffen Hall, Mr. Singer questioned why people thought he was doing so much good. So first of all, Singer wants to know, why do people think this is good? Singer doesn't even understand that you're allowed to have an opinion different than his. 
This is statism. He wants to control what you think. And furthermore, renovating the don't, don't we hear from the fucking cocksucking government all the time that all these renovations and construction projects don't we always hear about how they're going to create jobs isn't this how the government sell oh we're going to build a new stadium with taxpayer money because it's going to create jobs well hey peter singer since you're a liberal democrat and since you believe that construction right isn't this the whole concept is that if we just spend more money it will create jobs well, David Geffen is spending. He's given away $100 million that's going to be spent. Isn't this going to create jobs that are going to go to people who need money so that they can buy food and pay their rent and pay their utilities and send their kids to college? But of course, that's not the right kind of way to spend your money, according to Singer. Mr. Singer says that he doesn't understand, quote, how anyone could think that giving to the renovation of a concert hall could impact the lives of generally well-off people living in Manhattan and well-off tourists that come to New York could be the best thing that you could do with $100 million. He notes, for example, that a donation of less than $100 could restore sight to someone who is blind. Mr. Geffen declined to comment which is good because Mr. Geffen doesn't have to comment. It's his money and his life. That's called freedom, which Peter Singer, of course, hates. Again, Peter, so a donation of less than $100 can restore sight to a blind person. Really? If it takes less than $100 to make blind people see is this like when john Kerry said that when he was elected president people in wheelchairs would get up and walk it takes less than a hundred dollars to make blind people see okay why are there blind people i'm pretty sure mr singer has more than a hundred dollars why isn't he restoring sight to blind people With his recent book's focus on philanthropy, he hopes to change how we think about what it means to be ethical. Quote, if you ask people what it means to live ethically, it's a thou shall not statement. You shouldn't cheat and you shouldn't lie, he says. Quote, but if you're fortunate enough to be a part of the more affluent billion in the world, to live ethically, you have to do something to help those who are less fortunate, who just happen to have been born in impoverished countries. And that's part of living an ethical life." Unquote. And so what is Peter Singer, scumbag extraordinaire, doing to help poor people in foreign countries? Well, he's voting for and supporting Obama, who kills those poor people in foreign countries with flying robots, by dropping bombs on them, by giving money and financial aid and economic aid to the governments that oppress and kill them. That's what Peter Singer is doing to help out those poor people in those other countries. Wow, isn't he such a wonderful person? Geffen, on the other hand, is simply donating money to a construction and renovation project that's going to employ a bunch of people so that they can make money to pay their bills. But of course, David Geffen just isn't as ethical and moral and wonderful as Mr. Singer is because, well, Mr. Singer's a liberal Democrat who supports murdering people in other countries. Mr. Singer rose to prominence with his 1975 book, Animal Liberation, in which he argued that animals should be treated with the same respect as humans, and that some animals are smarter than both children and severely impaired adults. The capacity to have conscious experiences, such as pleasure and pain, he says, is the key difference between beings that are morally significant and those that are not. He has drawn harsh criticism for his support of certain types of euthanasia and, in some circumstances, infanticide. Now, again, Peter is like, well, but animals are smarter than children and some adults. And maybe that's how Peter Singer reconciles his support of the murder of brown people in Afghanistan. Maybe he thinks those people are less intelligent than animals. 
And of course, Peter Singer is all in favor of killing off people that aren't very smart, yet he is a supporter of the Liberal Democrats and the government, which has a vested interest in keeping handicapped people, mentally retarded people, inferior people alive, because it creates a victim class which continues to need the state. Again, if he was running around out there killing people with low IQs, I'd be a little more impressed, but he's not doing that. He also, this argument about how, where is it? The capacity to have conscious experiences like pleasure and pain is the key difference between moral significance and not. No, it isn't. Pleasure and pain is not the key difference. The key difference between moral significance and not is the ability to acknowledge the moral significance of other beings. That is the difference between, that is why animals don't have rights, because animals don't have rights, because, because well, also because rights don't exist. I'm using the term rights as a shorthand. Stefan Molyneux recently did a good video about why rights don't exist, and it's something I need to talk about more because I have long, long, long acknowledged that there are no such thing as rights in the sense that those of you out there think they are, think they exist. Anyhow, that's, that's what gives a being ethical, moral significance. That's what gives a being rights is the ability to recognize it in someone else. As I've argued before, as an as anarcho-capitalist, for us as anarcho-capitalist to kill a statist is not morally wrong because a statist is someone who does not respect our right to self-ownership and our right to property. And the statist is someone who wants us to die so the statist can have wealth redistribution. The statist wants the anarcho-capitalist to die so the statist can get Obamacare. So these are people who do not recognize our right to exist, our right to property, and these are people who violate the non-aggression principle because they are not capable of understanding we have these rights that means they don't have the rights. That's why, as I said before, the reason as anarcho-capitalists we shouldn't go out and kill statists isn't because it's morally or ethically wrong to kill a statist. The reason we shouldn't kill statists is because the statists fucking outnumber us and they have flying robots. The author of more than a dozen books, including Practical Ethics and Rethinking Life and Death, Mr. Singer has long argued that it is morally wrong for some people to live luxuriously while others starve. His new book, along with the effective altruism movement that he has helped to start, is an effort to put those beliefs in practice. And yet, while it's so wrong for you to live in luxury, Singer is I'm sure living in a very nice house and I'm willing to bet there are no homeless people or poor people living in his house with him. Peter Singer is the perfect example of what I have said over and over and over and over. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you think. What matters is what you do or what you don't do. Millennials, he says, are the most altruistic generation he has yet to come across, which he attributes in part to technology. Quote, it connects them all over the world, and so they're more cosmopolitan, and the barriers between people in different countries far away have declined. Another factor is that with the IT revolution, a different kind of person makes a lot of money, and they're extremely well paid, and they're wondering what to do with that money. Unquote. Now, millennials are very altruistic because the millennials aren't very smart. Now, first of all, if they're so connected to people in other countries, if they're so cosmopolitan, why do they support Obama murdering people in other countries with bombs and flying robots? The millennials, the medicated generation, the dumbest generation ever, is not smart and cosmopolitan and well-connected. They can't do math. That's why they are the way they are. They believe that Obama will be there for their entire life to support them cradle to grave, to give them Obamacare. They believe that the government will always be there to make sure they have money. This has nothing to do with them being altruistic. This has to do with them being young and dumb. Young, dumb people don't know how to do math, and young, dumb people don't understand economics. 
Born in Melbourne, Mel Melbourne, 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 to parents who had escaped from Nazi-occupied Australia, Mr. Singer now splits his time between Princeton, New Jersey, and Melbourne. He and his wife have three adult children. Again, the Nazis failed. Had the, had the Nazis only killed his parents, the world would be so much nicer. I also love how they call it adult children. Yeah, I bet they're very, very childlike still, having been raised by... And of course, he has time to go between Princeton, New Jersey, and Melbourne. How much jet fuel is burned flying him back and forth each year? How much resources... What's the carbon footprint of a person who owns two houses as opposed to those brown people in Afghanistan? What's their carbon footprint prior to Obama blowing them up with flying robots? As for how he has, I need a drink of water. And yes, it really is water. No, no gin today. Because I have to go work for a living. I have to go make money so that Peter Singer can take it away from me and send it to foreign governments that kill their own citizens. As opposed, of course, to the governments that don't kill their own citizens. Oh, there are none of those. As for how he has disposed of his own income over the years, Mr. Singer concedes that he did make family vacations a priority. Again, it's not what you say, it's not what you think, it's what you do. And listen to this as the statist justifies his state. Listen, this is, this is brilliant. Just listen to what these people say and fucking think about it. That's all you have to do. Quote, We spend money on vacations that no doubt could do more elsewhere, but that's something that's important. I work pretty hard during the normal year, and my wife's been working as well, so we think it's worth making that time. You see... Peter Singer can own two houses and fly back and forth and go on vacation, but you shouldn't. Because you see, Peter, he works pretty hard during the normal year. Now you, you don't work hard. You haven't done a fucking... David Geffen did nothing for his money. David Geffen was just fucking sitting there and all that money just fucking fell on top of him. Right? Nobody else works hard. The rest of you, and I actually didn't even get this anywhere in the quotes, but Singer's thesis here is that you should give one-third of your income to charity. One-third. Now remember, what is a charity? A charity is a statist organization. Every charity you point out to me, you know, whoever the fuck it is, the, the titty cancer people, the fucking... Help Jerry's kids. The what you show me any any charity organization, it is part of the state. Singer's thesis here is that you should be giving one third, thirty three percent, one third. Was it one third? Am I am I lying? Let me just run over here and make sure I didn't get that number wrong. Yes. God damn it. Yes, one-third. He says you should be giving one-third of your income to charities. Because, you see, you don't work hard like he does. He can get a vacation because he works hard. You don't work hard, so fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, man. Fuck you. All right. Quote, there are plenty of studies showing that beyond a certain level, around $75,000, having more money doesn't make much of a difference in well-being. Unquote. Then thus, you know, Peter Singer again. Well, there's these studies that say people who have more than $75,000 aren't going to be any happier. Therefore, that money should be given away. And if they don't voluntarily give it away, I'm going to have the state come in and take it from you. That's, of course, is his dream. He's not necessarily advocating a law about doing this yet, of course, but that's where it's all going. That's where it's always all going with these people is, oh, we gotta have a law, we gotta have a law, we gotta have a fucking law. 
Peter Singer, yes. And get this, just when you read about these people and read what they say, everything about this is his need to control what other people are doing. And not in the sense of controlling what other people are doing as in the non-aggression principle, other people should not aggress against him and other people should respect his property rights. No, that's nowhere in sight. It's all about him violating the non-aggression principle, violating your property rights, and telling you that if you're not giving away the amount of money he thinks you should give away, you're a morally bad person. It's not just a matter of he thinks you should give away a third of your income. He thinks if you don't give away a third of your income, you are morally and ethically a bad person. And this is a piece of shit who supports Obama, who murders people in other countries. And thus you see the moral and ethical, so to speak, in so much as I like using the, those words for me are right up there with rights. They don't exist, but I'm using them as shorthand. You see the moral and ethical beliefs of a person who is totally okay with the government killing people, spraying tear gas in the face of protesters, putting people in prison for no goddamn reason, murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots, bombing other countries, giving financial aids to dictatorships, all that shit totally fucking okay in Peter Singer's world. But if you have a job and you work for a living and you don't give a third of your income to charity, now you're immoral. All of the morality and ethics, in so much as those things exist, yada, 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 of statist is all focused upon how can we take money from other people and give it to the people we think should have the money? That is the essence of statism is always going to be the essence of state. It is, it, that is what statism is. Statism is redistribution. 